Hey Noah in Colorado Springs, Colorado, see more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com and today I'm going to cut your prescription lenses with anti-glare for your Persol frame that you have mailed to me. It is the Persol, hang on, where's my flashlight, where's my flashlight, oh there it is, it is the Persol 8359, size 53 and it is the color 108 Cafe. Persols are really nice frames made in Italy, have a very unique spring hinge system built in without a real spring, but it flexes right there, very unique, no other frame company does this, and Persol is actually one of the oldest frame companies in existence, always being in Italy, always making great products, however, I'm not an authorized dealer, so he has sent me his frames for me to install the lenses of which I do, I'll pop it out the original demo lenses, one of which says Persol. And I'm going to put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker and hit start. Everybody wants to know, how does the computer know what shape lens to cut? This is why. That stylus is going around tracing the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here, freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. Buy any frame that I offer and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Now, since I am not a Persol dealer, Eric did pay, I'm sorry, excuse me, Noah. Noah did pay $49.99 for his lenses, and of course, there's a $44.99 upgrade for anti-glare for a total of $94.98 for high-quality lenses with anti-glare coating cut by me, a professional. So that is the shape that we'll be cutting. Magnified, I will minify it down to the correct size. We'll magnify it while I'm working on it. Now the computer starts its pupillary distance at 32.5. Yours is 30. So I'm going to tap the minus button a few times till we get to 30. I do want to raise the optical center up, decenter the lens upwards because you're going to be looking through the top third of the lens. So I'm going to move the optical center up in your frame. So let's come down here to my lensometer. Get your lenses prepped. Your right lens is minus four. I'm sorry, minus five seventy-five, minus fifty, minus five seventy-five, minus fifty at one seventy. Turn the axis wheel to one seventy. Let's make sure that is on. First one of the day that gets shipped. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Rotate the lens. Well, let's put the power drum on minus five seventy-five. Did I mention this is the first one of the day, and I haven't had all my coffee yet? Don't worry, I still know what I'm doing cutting lenses. I just have to turn things on. That's the hardest thing. My wife, who loves taking pictures, is, she has these very, very nice lenses and still forgets to take the lens cap off, and that's essentially what I'm doing here. So, I'm glad to know I'm not the only one, or maybe we're just made for each other. See that, honey? Um, okay, so we're at minus 575. Let me just check your astigmatism correction. Now, what I did is I found the spherical component of your lenses, found the optical center, I'll explain the anti-glare in just a little bit, but I've got the dots on the lenses there, and where's my pen? Here it is. We're going to mark that one as the right lens. Let's do the same thing for the left, minus 475, minus 50 at 30. Spin the fine-tune knob to 30, and this is minus 475, minus 50 at 30, minus 475, minus 50 at 30. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Put the lens in, put the power drum on minus 475. Rotate the lens until the sphere power comes in clearly. And hang on for a second, I just want to check something. Okay. And rotate that, get everything nice and crisp. Check your stigmatism correction, which I'll explain later. Put three dots on your lenses and label this one L, which stands for not right. So, let's see, I need to get two, oh, you know what, I gotta open this up, gotta open up my new one, I'm all out of stickers, so here's my new roll, take everything out, put that into recycling, I'll get to that later, everything gets recycled here, take the rubber band off, I wanna see something cool when I'm doing with my rubber bands, the labs send me the lenses wrapped up, and protect the sleeves with a rubber band around them and I'm saving it to make my own. Pretty soon I'm going to have the second largest rubber band ball in the world. Tourists will come here from all over the world. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Let me know if you believe that. So, I put those down there for now. So, these are this is a double sided adhesive sticker which I need to attach to your blocks. So, I'm going to stick this one onto the first one, set that there, do the same thing. Now, on the back is a magnet, it's going to do its job twice today. The first time, it's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the arm. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky, line that up. Pupillary distance, optical center height. Let me just make a note where I'm cutting this one out. And the reason I put those dots on there is it tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. It cannot be off kilter. So get everything lined up where it's looking good. Check one thing. We're looking good there. I'm going to hit the button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. I'm going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet with the magnet inside here or something magnetical. Your pupillary distance for your left eye is 31. This has mirrored your right, but your left is a little bit different. So I'm going to tap the plus button until we get up to 31. And get everything lined up there perfectly. And check one thing. Oh yeah, the lens is large enough, which is always good. And I'm going to place the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, and then you can drink your own coffee and cut your own lenses and you won't need this guy anymore to do it for you. And so out there in Colorado Springs, you're getting an orange cleaning cloth for your Denver Broncos. I'm going to lose the sale here, but if I make some coffee, that's the mug that's going in. You hear that, Korg? So Hang on one second, the phone is ringing, I'll be right back. Okay, thanks, I'm back. That was the lab calling. They, I had to have a job out tomorrow to someone who's going down to the Caribbean. They needed their Ray-Bans with mirror-coated lenses and then they're gonna be rocking them. So, let's get back to yours in Colorado Springs. So, the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far left. It's gonna act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's what's gonna put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of your frame. So let's go ahead and put the right lens in. Wake up the computer. And again, that's the shape that we'll be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. I do not want to polish the edge of your lenses because they won't be seen. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front convex surface of the lens. I'm only going to put one on the rear concave surface of the lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that they are large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Of which you will have some due to your prescription of being a thin metal eye wire. Plastic frames do a better job of hiding edge thickness than metal frames do. So, but hey, this is what you wanted. That's what I'm going to make for you. Just like my dad told me, you can have anything you want as long as you pay for it. So if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning the water is always spraying on the lens during the cutting process. Now water will spray onto the lens just the, the last 20 seconds of the cycle to wash away any optical debris that you see beginning to form around the edge of the lens. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are ballistics grade polymer lenses. This is what all the soldiers use in overseas. They also have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so this is permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. Now, the other nice thing about your lenses are they are aspheric. Aspheric simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round and just like a sphere, round in every direction. 
your lenses had a flatter curvature, so they're thinner and lighter, but they're also a flatter curvature to fit into today's flatter curvature frames. They won't give you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance when looking through them. Rather bulbous and doesn't look good. Now the other thing is that you did upgrade to the anti-glare coating. Anti-glare is three features in one. It eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, and the such. Now it also goes by the initials ARC, which means for anti-reflective coating. So it reduces reflection. So when someone's looking at you, they're not seeing their reflection in your glasses. It minimizes that and makes for much better eye contact. Plus, if you take a selfie or if someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in your lens. You won't see your camera in the selfie. So that's that. Now the third feature that I like, which is the practical side, is it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating. The machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It's actually several million dollars. I've been doing a little research recently for a blog. And it takes over eight hours to vaporize eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, it comes with the industry's hardest scratch coating to protect your time and investment. Now if you notice your lens is completely flat all the way around just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter on its own. And it's getting its last check and balance system to see where to place the bevel. The knife-like edge. So it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So now it's going to drop down onto the bevel wheel, not the cutting wheel, but the middle wheel with that channel, that valley. And it's going to cut a groove into the lens, a bevel, actually the opposite of a groove. A male groove. So in just a moment, water will spray onto the lens. Look at that, right on cue. And they say they never make you proud when you want them to. But it tells me that it's almost done. Then we'll take it out and we'll see if it fits into the frame first time around or if I need to take a little bit more off. Now in just a moment, a lever will move into view. At the end of that lever is a spinning wheel, something you would find on a Dremel tool. That's what's applying the safety bevel to the rear concave surface of the lens. Should any portion of this lens protrude from the back surface of the frame and against your cheek, which it will not in this frame because of the nose pads, this creates separation away from your face unlike the plastic frames that I'm wearing that come closer into contact with the cheek. But should any portion of the lens come in contact with the cheek, it will be smooth and not be of any discomfort. I'm going to take the lens out, dry it off. I want to remove some of that optical debris, the schwarf. Look at that. Ooh, I love it when it comes off in one piece, just like lint out of the, the, the dryer trap. Throw that in the trash. Go ahead and remove a little bit more. Collect all that. Put that in the trash. Clean up as you go. Now, let's see. Do I need a Phillips head or a flat? That is a Phillips head. So let me grab my red Phillips head screwdriver. Rotate lefty loosey to get that screw out turn the frame around never turning the frame downward so that the screw could fall out place the lens into the the metal eye wire and into the you have a groove in here that bevel so the top of the lens the bevel of that's going to fit in there tuck that lens down do a little bit of righty tighty Put your frame down to protect the finish on this rubber mat as I finish tightening the screw. Check that, that looks good. So we can go ahead and start cutting the left lens. We're gonna flip that over to L and hit start. The door is gonna close, the clamp's gonna shut, and again, the lens is gonna be traced by the two white styluses. First of all, making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the lens. And then the old carpenter saying, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, which it has moved the bevel backwards so no one sees that from the front of the lens. 
Again, your prescription is twice as strong as the average prescription, and this is a thin metal high wire. And let me go ahead and pop that off, pull that sticker off, throw the block in there, place the sticker on that. Oh, no, my PD's still on there, isn't it? Or I'll put a new one. I'll put a new one on here. We're going to come down to the lensometer, spin the axis wheel, the fine tune knob to 170, put it in, find the spherical component of your lens, the optical center, and put a dot on that lens. Now, the prescription is minus 575 minus 50. You are nearsighted. With your glasses off, everything is much too large. So your lens is minify. That's why there's a minus sign. Let's say 520. You're at 23. You're on the 23rd rung of a ladder. The average prescription is about minus 3. Yours is at minus 575, which means you're just twice as smart as everyone else. I wonder if you're in the Air Force there in Colorado Springs. But, so, let's check that power and we're at minus 575, one tick mark away from 6. Now we can check your astigmatism correction and there's a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. That is it. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. Once everything is the correct size, astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike. It's, it's, it's the blurriness. It, when you correct for that, it makes everything nice and crisp. So, plus for driving at night makes it so much better. So you have an additional two steps. You have one curve on your eye going this way. Your astigmatism is a second curve, and it's how you line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. And we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 170, which we're at 170. So let's check your that correction and we end up at minus six and a quarter that's because you add two like signs together or using more common terms if someone had borrowed five dollars and seventy five cents from you then they borrowed another fifty cents they would owe you six dollars and twenty five cents that's where we're at six twenty five in the red now your left eye needs a whole diopter less correction so let's see 16, 19. You need 19 steps of far-sided correction in your left eye. Still an additional two steps of stigmatism correction in the left eye. But we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 30. Now, these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Oh, it's busy today. It's busy. It's busy. Ah, I'll get that later. I'll answer that in a few minutes. So, the, um, but yeah, so this could be anywhere, again, a straight line at 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn on your right eye, we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 170. On your left eye, we're going to turn it to 30. So, but again, anywhere from 0 to 180. Completely different on every individual. No two are ever the same. Let me darken, whoa. Let me tighten that. Tighten the knob down. Darken that there. I'm trying out a new ink and it washes off too easily, wouldn't you agree? So the lens is getting the bevel placed on there. In just a moment, water will spray onto the lens. Now anyone out there, it doesn't have to be a Persol, but if you have your own frame that you want lenses for, you can mail them to me and I'll do it all single vision lenses regardless of how strong the prescription is is $49.99 if you want to upgrade to high index you can I can do high index 160, 167, 170, 174 I can do transitions, I can do anti-glare, I can do polarized sunglasses, I can do tinted polar, I mean tinted sunglasses if a lens can be made I can do it, I am independent, there is no prescription that is too strong or too tough most of the box stores out there only want to do 70% of the prescriptions, the easiest 70%. And they just tell people strong prescriptions that they can't do it. Well, come to me. I can do it. Now, Noah did not want to upgrade to the high index. He's been using polycarb all along. It doesn't bother him. Didn't feel the need to upgrade, and I quite agree. I don't think that's too much of an issue been wearing glasses since he was five years old he told me 
he understands there's going to be a certain amount of edge thickness in his prescription. I don't know what's going on out there in the world of Persol, but I'm getting a ton of Persols mailed to me. Of course, whoever sells Persol, this frame came with the sticker that was still on there. It was a, this is a $350 frame. And whoever charges $350 for a frame is charging a fortune for the lenses too. And that's why it came to me. So, let me grow my monster. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Looks like the little Snapchat thing in black though, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to come down here, spin the fine tune knob to 30, put the lens in just above that black dot, and read the power. And I am getting minus 475, one tick mark away from five. Now you have 475, you have two steps of astigmatism correction, which we'll check for, and we end up at minus five and a quarter. So that is cut perfectly. I couldn't do a, a better job myself if I had cut these lenses. Wait, I did cut these lenses. So, the your pupillary distance is 30 for your right eye, 31 for the left. Turn the card around. Place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. And, I'm, and then when I read it on your left lens, we're getting 61. So that is cut perfectly. Now, this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And Colorado Springs is still in the U.S. But when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops... Why am I using my cloth? Let me use yours to make sure it works. 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one two and three i press them on the counter and press down there is no wobble now if you had worn these before i would not adjust them because they would be adjusted for you now when i say wobble i'm part of that 80 percent when i take mine off they wobble on the counter but they sit level on me for those of you keeping score at home i'm wearing the ray-ban 2132 new wayfair in color 6053 blue crystal to match my blue crystal i'm always trying to be matching you know i gotta be cute so Push down, there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and that neither one is askew like that. That I will do. Um, check the tension on each hinge and that feels good. So that's that. If you've liked what you've seen, you can email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button on the website or better yet, just leave a message for me in the comment section below. You can always subscribe to my channel if you want to see more glasses being made. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at freeprescriptionlenses.com or on Twitter as freerxlenses. So Noah in Colorado Springs, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses with anti-glare for your Persol 8359, size 53, color 108. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.